President Trump has called it appropriate to discuss opening an investigation into former Vice President Joe Biden and his family. His comments mirror calls by the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Following reports that Biden threatened to withhold loan guarantees from Ukraine unless the country removed its top prosecutor. Questions have also surrounded the Biden's lack of concerns over China. In an op-ed in the New York Post, Peter Schweitzer, who serves as president of the Government Accountability Institute, contends that Biden's attitude towards the Chinese government is because his family sees them as business partner. He joins me now via Skype to expand on this. Peter Schweitzer is also the author of Secret Empires, How the American Political Class Hides Corruption and Enriches Family and Friends. Thank you so much for joining me, Peter. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So, Peter, as I, from your New York Post op-ed, it seems to me that there are two pieces of potential corruption within, uh, from Hunter Biden. One, it stems from Ukraine and a deal with Burisma, which was an energy company there. And the other is Hunter Biden's holdings in a company which has deep ties to the Chinese government and to Chinese cash. Let's start first with Ukraine. So tell us the contours of this deal and the conflict of interest that might ensnare the former vice president who's now running for president. Yeah, it really begins in 2014. Uh, that's when Hunter Biden and his business partner, Devin Archer, joined the board of directors of this Ukrainian energy company called Burisma. Uh, Burisma is a highly controversial company. It's controlled by a Ukrainian oligarch who is notorious among oligarchs, which is saying something. Uh, <laughs> and Hunter Biden basically joins the board along with his business partner, Burisma. Uh, what's curious about this is Hunter Biden has no background in Ukraine. Uh, and he has no background in energy policy. Uh, what he does have is a father who's vice president at the time, who is point person on Obama administration policy towards Ukraine. So, you know, from my standpoint, the first question to ask is what exactly is Hunter Biden, be Biden being paid for, given that he has no expertise and background in this area? Uh, the amount of money we're talking about is large. Uh, in, in a related uh, court case uh, involving Biden's business partner, Devin Archer, there were financial records uh, that were released. Uh, and in one account alone, over a just a 14-month period, Burisma poured more than $3 million into that account. So this involved a lot of money uh, in Ukraine in and of and by itself. Right. And so going deeper into that deal, Burisma was actually, I think, under investigation or implicated in a corruption scandal. And so the former vice president was actually involved, and, and uh, the Hill's own John Solomon has discussed this with the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian officials himself, showing that there might have been political interference and that Hunter Biden benefited from the former vice president's interference in the Ukrainian inter uh, internal politics, asking for the firing of the prosecutor. Can you explain the the implication uh, of that of that circumstance. Yes, so we know that Joe Biden uh, flew to Ukraine a lot. He was point person for the distribution of Western aid, and he was heavily involved in sort of sending messages to Ukraine on a variety of issues, one of which was his uh, public statement uh, that he wanted the chief uh, prosecutor investigator of Ukraine, uh, Mr. Shokin, fired. Uh, on the grounds that he was not uh, sufficiently zealous in pursuing uh, criminal investigations of corruption. Um, you know, I, I don't know Mr. Shokin, but what we do know is that at this time, Burisma was under investigation by Ukrainian authorities. And in fact, Burisma's own counsel, uh, John Beretta, who was brought in by Hunter Biden to help them on the case, says that those investigations continued into 2016. Uh, the implication of John's reporting is that uh, Biden wanted Shokin fired uh, as a way of potentially to end the investigation into the company that was paying his son, Hunter Biden. Right. And so what I have seen criticism of this is that this is a conspiracy theory. They're saying, oh, Peter Schweitzer is at it again. He Just the way that he got Hillary Clinton, now he's going after Joe Biden. So the main criticism that I've seen is that the timeline does not add up here. So I'd like to give you a chance to respond to those concerns. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, John did great reporting on the issue relating to the fire of Shokin. In my mm -hmm. book, I focus on the fact that Hunter Biden is given millions of dollars into this account by the Ukrainian 
uh, company that is highly corrupt. It involves an oligarch who wants favors from the United States, appears to get favors from the United States in terms of energy policy. That's the first question we have to ask. The second point that John raises about the firing of Shokin, the timeline does line up. And, and honestly, I've been a little stunned by some of the sloppy reporting by Bloomberg and others where they're essentially quoting anonymous officials saying that the Ukrainian investigation into Burisma was over in 2014 and the timeline doesn't work. I would encourage everybody to go to the Kiev Post, which is the major English language publication in Ukraine. They did an interview with Burisma's attorney, John Beretta, who was brought in by Hunter Biden to represent Burisma. And in a 2017 interview, he says, that Ukrainian investigations into Burisma lasted well into 2016. So I would rather take the word of Burisma's attorney from a legitimate source than uh, anonymous sources claiming the investigation do was done in 2014 any time of the day. Regardless, right. the question has to be asked, why is the son of the vice president getting sweetheart deals from foreign oligarchs? That's the first question that has to be answered here. Right, and this isn't the only sweetheart deal, because I want to also turn to China. And this one is particularly concerning because it involves, as I understand it, is a direct loan from the Chinese government to a company which is invested in by not only Hunter Biden, but actually the stepson of John Kerry. Yeah, so in 2009, uh, Hunter Biden sets up a firm called Rosemont Seneca Partners. Uh, John Kerry's stepson, Chris Hines, is an investor uh, in that firm. He doesn't seem to have been active in any of the meetings or anything mm -hmm. else. The other partner involved in this is Devin Archer. And Rosemont Seneca Partners um, lands this huge deal with the Chinese government, not with a Chinese company, not with an American company in China, with a Chinese government. And the timeline is very clear. In December of 2013, Hunter Biden travels on Air Force Two with his father while his father is meeting with Chinese officials. There are photographs about this. Nobody can dispute this fact. Ten days after they return, Hunter Biden's boutique firm, Rosemont Seneca Partners, gets a $1 billion, that's with a B, private equity deal from the Chinese government. $1 billion, it's later expanded to $1.5 billion. And I talk about this in detail in the book. This is a unique deal. Um, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, nobody else has this deal. It's done through the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. And so again, as with Ukraine, Hunter Biden has no background in private equity. He has no background doing business in China. Why did he get this deal? Um, and the problem is that if you look at the criticisms that Joe Biden uh, was facing in uh, you know, 2013, 2014, when he made that trip and other pronouncements on China, he was criticized by the Washington Post and others for going soft on Beijing. So the question has to be asked again, why did Hunter Biden get this sweetheart deal and what favors were possibly given in return? That's a very simple question mm -hmm. that I think needs to be investigated. So to be clear, Peter, is there any evidence that the former vice president himself benefited from these deals? That's that's what people say. Oh, well, maybe the son is shady, but it doesn't actually touch the father. As, as we know, it, as it currently stands, is there any evidence that the former vice president either A, knew about these deals or financially benefited himself? Was he bought any assets by his son? Any sort of indicators of corruption like that? Yeah, no, very fair question. Look, mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe that Joe Biden and his son take a, what, 20-hour trip, flight to Beijing, China, and this subject never came up. Um, I find that ridiculous uh, on the face of it. As to the question of whether Joe Biden personally benefited from this deal, uh, frankly, that's irrelevant. Uh, the international bribery statutes that the United States subscribed to say that if a politician or if a politician's family member or close friend benefits that constitutes bribery. So look, just for the same reason that I said at the beginning of the Trump administration that the Trump family members, meaning the adult kids, cannot and should not do large foreign deals. Uh, and they said that they were gonna swear those off. 
Uh, the same thing should apply to the Bidens. Um, and I think in, in this case, it's even worse because, look, you could at least make the case in, in, the, in the case of the Trumps that Donald Trump's children have worked in the hotel business. They were businessmen. They've done international deals. Again, Hunter Biden has no experience in any of these areas. So what I've called for simply is the Senate to ask Hunter Biden to come and testify and people look into this. We're mm -hmm. talking about large deals and large sums of money. This is much larger than, you know, the Billy Carter scandal in the 1970s. The dollar amounts are larger and it involves countries like China, which are America's chief rival on the global stage. What's the ballpark number figure? That, so we're talking about 1 billion, 1.5 billion. Do we have any indication of what Hunter Biden's income over this period actually was? No, we don't. I mean, that's yeah. part of the problem. I mean, one of the things I call for is that politicians of all stripes be required to disclose if their adult family members are doing foreign deals with foreign governments or foreign corporations. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Joe Biden or in the case of a Republican, they have to disclose a $500 campaign donation. They have to disclose if they have $500 in GE stock. But if their adult children land large foreign deals with foreign governments, there's no disclosure requirement, which is, in my mind, absolutely absurd. Yeah, that, that is. And finally, Peter, is there any new information that you can share from us that's forthcoming from your book on Hunter Biden or, or, or uh, any of the other any other candidates, including the Trump family? Well, I think, uh, yeah. you know, in, Se in Secret Empires, I talk about offshoring corruption. And what I mean by that is that uh, powerful family members in, of politicians in Washington, D.C. are cashing in. I talk about the deals involving Joe Biden. I also talk about the deals involving Senate Majority Mitch uh, McConnell and his wife, Elaine Chao. Uh -huh. uh, and I touch on the fact that the Trumps uh, have been targeted. The Chinese have said that one of the ways in which they want to weaken Trump's resolve on China uh, is to cut deals with the children. Uh, these are what I call the American princelings. The Chinese have the princelings. If you want to do a deal with the Chinese government, you hire one of their kids as a consultant. They're regarded as the princelings of China. We are moving in that direction in this country on a bipartisan basis, uh, and we need to get a hold of this quickly or corruption is going to become rampant. This is a problem in both political parties. Uh, the Biden case is, I think, particularly egregious because of his position uh, and the fact that Hunter Biden had no no background, really no business getting these deals in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Peter. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, we have more rising continuing after this.